Hey everyone, welcome back to the Weeble tutorial series. In today's video, we're gonna learn how to create a custom screener on the Weeble desktop platform. Now, if you haven't been here before, you simply need to come over here to the left-hand side and click on the screener icon. Once you click on the screener tab, it's gonna open up a page that looks a whole lot like this. Now, for those of you not already familiar with what a screener is, it's simply a way to comb through the thousands of companies out there in the world to only find those that you would actually be willing to trade. Although Weeble Screener is not nearly as advanced as some of the other platforms out there, it's still incredibly useful. We can use it to search for simple things like stock price or volume for the day, or we can incorporate some fundamental filters to maybe narrow it down to only those companies that pay dividends that also have a low PE ratio. We could even scan for some simple studies, but we're not gonna spend a whole lot of time on that. I just wanna make it clear that the whole point of this thing is to actually find companies that you would be willing to trade. So you don't have to look at Netflix all day waiting to put on a trade. It's only gonna show Netflix in this screener if Netflix already meets all of our criteria. Now, right off the bat, you can see all of the filters we currently have on the left-hand side. And right now it's basically nothing. All we have is region, which is basically where the company is based. Right now we're saying we're only looking at United States-based companies. We're saying we don't care where the stock is listed. It could be on the New York Stock Exchange, NASDAQ, doesn't matter. And then in terms of market cap, we're saying we are only looking for companies that trade over $1.2 billion, but are worth less than $5 billion. If we wanted to add additional filters to this list, all we'd have to do is come up here to the filter section and click on that. Once that drop down menu opens up, you can see all of the filters that are available to us on Weeble. And like I said before, it is pretty limited. At the top, you're gonna see things like market. We already talked about region and exchange, but another one there is sector. Remember, sector is simply the type of company that it is. Is it an energy company, an automobile manufacturing company? Is it a tech company? What do they do? That's the sector. The next one up there is the quotes indicator page. We've already got one market cap. That's just the size of the company. For example, Apple is a two and a half trillion dollar company. I think Amazon's about two trillion right now. This is one of the tools we could use to maybe narrow out certain companies that are too small for us. Like maybe we wouldn't be willing to trade companies that are only worth $100 million or $10 million. This is one way we could filter out those types of companies is using market cap. To the right of that, we've got price. That's exactly what it sounds like. It's just based off the price of the underlying stock. Maybe you don't like to trade stock that are less than $10 a share, but you also don't like to trade stock that's over $100 a share. This is how we could narrow it down that way. We could also look for stock that have had a big move today. That's gonna be percent change. Maybe you only want to see stock in this list that have moved up at least 5% today or down 3%, whatever it might be. Below that, we can see volume for the day. Maybe you only want to look at companies that are fairly liquid, so have traded over a million shares so far today. Or moving down to financial indicators, maybe you're not willing to trade those really high growth companies. So we could weed out those high growth by saying, hey, the max PE could be 30 or 35 or something like that. We could also narrow it down by earnings per share or the dividend amount, the dividend yield. I mean, you got a few different filters that you could use, but let's just go through creating an example in this case. We're gonna add a price filter, a volume filter, a percent change filter, and a dividend yield filter. Now that we've added those, we can see them on the left-hand side, and now we can begin customizing them if we want to. Starting with market cap at the top, let's say I only wanted to trade companies that were worth at least five billion, and I didn't care about the max, so we'll drag that all the way up to the top. Next up, price. I don't wanna trade any companies less than 10 bucks a share, but also anything above 500 might be a little bit rich for my blood, so we'll go ahead and throw 500 in there as the max. Next up, we're looking for companies that are up at least, I don't know, 2% today. So we'll go ahead and put 2% there, and we'll go ahead and move the max all the way up to the top. Next up, we're gonna look for volume. I wanted to look for companies that are trading at least a million shares today, so we'll go ahead and throw in 1 million here. And then in terms of dividend yield, I just wanna look for companies that are paying greater than 1%, but also less than 5%. Now, once I hit enter here, it's only showing me companies on the right-hand side that meet all of our criteria. And currently in the world, there are only 58 companies that meet all of these criteria, and they're all very basic criteria. Each one of these companies on the right are worth at least $5 billion, trade between $10 and $500 a share, we're up at least 2% today, have already traded over a million shares so far today as well, and all have a dividend yield of at least 1%. If I wanted to save this going forward, I could name this maybe my dividend payers, and I could hit save down here in the lower left so I can access this going forward. So if I ever accidentally reset it or I create a different screener, I can always come up here to the top where my screeners are at and click on the dividend screener. And if I click on the three little lines and go to modify it, I could always edit it further if I needed to. So if I wanted to add another filter for let's say PE ratio, I could always click on that and then come down here to PE and let's say 
I wanted to make it a zero PE on the low end, so at least they were profitable in the past year. And I'm gonna make the max PE in this case 35 because I wanna weed out any of those higher growth companies. And now you can see I have weeded out a few. Before I had 58 results, now I only have 39 in this, in this list right here. If I wanted to override what I had done before, I could always hit save once again, and now my screener has been updated. One of the cool things from here is I could also turn this into a watch list if I wanted to. Coming over here to create a watch list, I could click on that, and then we'll give it a name, dividend payers in this case. We'll go ahead and throw that in there. And once I hit okay, it's now a watch list. So if I came over here to my stocks profile page, I could actually change this watch list. And these are all the companies that were in my screener before. Now I could very quickly go through each of these and see if I actually wanted to place a trade on them. Maybe learn a little bit more about them, see if they actually meet my criteria, whether or not I want to invest in them. But I'll always have this screener now on my left-hand side. Now, like I said already, Webull Scanner is not as advanced as other ones out there like Thinkorswim. Thinkorswim, you can basically scan for whatever you want to scan for, whether it be a study, a fundamental criteria, you could even look for certain patterns. In Webull, it is far more limited, but I still really like it. You can really use this to comb through the thousands of companies out there and hopefully find something you'd actually be willing to trade right now. I know I went through this quick, but hopefully this video helped to show you guys some of the possible ways that you could use this scanner inside of Webull. If you do have any additional questions for me, please leave them down below in the comments. Also, if you did find this video helpful, please be sure to hit that like button and check out some of my other tutorial videos if you found this one helpful. I hope you guys all have an amazing rest of your week and I'll see you all in the next video.